to me. Where's the donations? God. Oh, such horrible viewers. <laughs> I'm joking, of course. All right, let's do this then. Instead of me just bantering on about nothing, let's actually go in game and introduce some players to the top left hand side. Our blue Zerg from SKT1. Let's hear it. We're going to be cheering on Dark. And he's going to be going up against the Red Terran player. Let's see it if you're cheering on MVP's Gummy Ho. First round of the Leifen Cup playoffs today. It is, of course, best of three double elimination eight player bracket. Exciting stuff indeed. As, um, yeah, it's something that you don't actually, um, it's a bracket you don't always see, um, all of the time, I guess. Kind of eight top Koreans playing in a double elim bracket, but... That's what this is, and I mean, again, we just look at the lineup of players today, it's fantastic. Dark, Gummiho, Classic, Solar, that's just the bottom half of the bracket. In the top half, again, we have uh, Keen, Alive, Reality, and Creator. It's a fantastic bracket, really looking forward to it. We'll follow the bottom side through for now. Uh, Dark, Gummiho to start, then we'll follow that up with a um, the winner against Classic, and uh, either Classic or Solar. So that's what we're going to be heading towards. What a great set of games we're going to have today. It's really looking fantastic. As we see a gas pool after Overlord coming in here for Dark. Before he is going to put down that hatchery on the natural expansion. So puts that hatchery down right now. I'm just going to be seeing the uh, racks finishing up on the high ground. And uh, no little command starting to come in as well from Gummy Ho. So setting that up and getting ready to go. Blame Yolki. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, we could blame Yolki. We definitely could. Blame Mjolki for uh, all the BlizzCon dollars disappearing. God damn it. Yeah, right, actually. I really need to get onto this more often. I feel as though I'm uh, doing Mjolki disservice by not actually blaming her. What is her job if not to be blamed for everything? You know? Dark gonna come down the right-hand side of the map with this Overlord. Second speed has started up for him, and it'll be interesting to see how he uses this, because it is a kind of an earlier link speed than usual. So let's see what he wants to do. He's got a couple of links on the way out initially. That's what you get from going for a pool first build order. They will bypass the Reaper, I think. Oh no, the Reaper's actually going to go up here and try and find it. Gimme Hill kind of scouting to try and find those Zerglings, but doesn't quite find them. They do run by. Don't think they're going to get over here in time to delay the CC, though, just because of the roundabout route that they're taking, the uh, the long route, to make sure that they don't get caught by a Reaper or anything. So that Reaper does come up into the main base, and we'll just start working away at a few of these drones. So drones start to take some damage, and... I'm just going to see the Reaper is uh, going to take a few hits as well. Actually, that Reaper very low for Queen nearby. Will get low, but will not go down just yet. Is there a natural Queen? Not yet either, because it's a pool first, so only one Queen out. So Reaper gets low, doesn't fall though. As, oh my god, the drone actually chasing it there. These two Zergles do come across the map. The CC finishes, and SCV is pulled to defend. Reaper safe, and well, Link Speed is about to kick in. Single Hellion has popped out, and now we'll see the Hellion uh, production will increase as we see the reactor being placed onto the factory instead of the barracks. So... Some Hellions on the way out, but Dark's actually come in to a fair amount of Zerglings here. He's already made a go to 20 or so in total. He's got 14 and 2 more on the way, so he's got about 16. And he's going to go into drones behind this, but this is very much so like a surprise factor sort of thing. We saw him doing this the other day in the actual group stages where he just played very aggressive Ling-based openings. Game after game after game. So we're going to see these Lings running up here and we're going to see what they can do. Hellions and a Reaper just going to be... Poking away, they grab another Zergling there, and oh, here we go, going up the ramp again, but actually the Hellions not being paid attention to there momentarily, and that allows Dark to do a little bit more damage with these Lings, although that being said, he's not going to get too many more kills here. In fact, two of the Hellions stay alive, the Reaper falls, but that's nice, only losing one Hellion in total. And for eight drones, kind of, you know, you sort of talk about it like eight drones, because in a way it is eight drones which he's lost, because he made 16 Lings. And to only kill a Hellion and a Reaper hasn't really been worth his while, I don't think. So, Dark, not after the best of starts. However, with the Pneumatized Carapace, he will scout the armory on the way. So, you'll have a good little warning system in place now, knowing that this Hellbat attack is coming across the map in the next couple of moments. Medivac with a few Marines in as well. Obviously, the healing from this is going to be important to keep those Hellbats and Marines alive. But for now, Dark only has three Queens. He only has a few Zerglings. And well, here we go. The spine crawl is halfway built up on the high ground. The Marines are going to lead the charge up here as he has to pull back almost straight away. He loses one of them. Link's going to try and come around the back and get onto the Marines. I mean, a Hellbat in the back as well going to go down. The Queen's target down. The Medivac, not the best to control by Gummy Ho. Not by a log shot. That means that these Queens are staying alive and the spine crawler will finish. Link is coming in again without a Medivac here though. Those Hellbats go down pretty swiftly because they're just not being healed. And two Hellions, they do manage to escape away off to the side. They're going to come down through the center now and. Oh, her overlords are having a bit of a party on the Terra Natural, apparently, but they're going to start being shot down by the Liberator. They start to pull back. 
And as we'll see, the two Hellions and one Marine that was heading across the map, they're going to change the direction as well. Good defense by Dark, then not really any damage taken at all here in the early stages. So Queen's just going to be injecting over on the third base. We're going to see a few overlords just going to sit overhead from Dark as well. And there's one Liberator from Gummy Hill continuing just chasing. Look to see what he can get up to. This uh, overlord going to be going down in a moment or so. So overlord does fall. Spots the uh, third base at least, I guess. Some information for him. Knows that's in location. Maybe affects the way he decides to play here. Maybe goes very aggressive to try and deny that third base which is building up on location. So I'm just going to be seeing the... Um Lings and Roaches starting to come across the map, actually. We're going to be seeing here quite a lot of Lings and Roaches starting to come across. A couple more Overlords starting to be built as well. And let's see how this is going to go. So Lings coming down through the center. A couple of Liberators up in the sky. And here's the Zerglings. Well, a few of them already going down. As again, the Overlords to the left-hand side, seeing what they can get up to. And these Lings and Roaches just continue to move across. A few Ravagers are going to start coming in. Actually, the Liberator Siege up on top of these. That's an interesting one. How quickly did Liberator Siege uh, Morphin Ravagers? Pretty quickly, actually. Uh, however, three of them do finish up. Uh, three of them finish up, but actually two of them die. And he does get the Corrosive Bowels off to kill one of the Liberators, though. So, a few more Ravagers morphing in. This aggressive attack from Dark is going to continue pushing across the map. And he's got no upgrades behind this or anything. Well, we see Gummy Hill. He's playing a mech composition. He saw a second factory added. He's got a Starport building uh, Banshees. Uh, this is interesting, because unfortunately... Despite playing a mech-based composition, he doesn't have any of those defensive mech units out just yet. He's on Hellions and a Cyclone. That's not quite what you really need to defend against the Ravagers. However, it will do a good job against the Zerglings. I like what Dog's done. He's only brought a few Zerglings for this. Oh no, the Banshee takes a lot of damage. Doesn't go down just yet. Well, now we'll dodge away from that next Corrosive Bile. Mm, the Hellions are making this a real issue for the Zerglings because the Zerglings don't want to run in because they will just run into a whole bunch of damage. You know, they'll go down very quickly. As the Ling's going to run in once again, we're going to see him all Hellions are beginning to go down. Now they move to Hellbats. Probably a safe decision. Gamil is going to defend after losing 18 workers. It's an interesting scenario where actually both players come out in a fairly okay location in terms of work count, in terms of army supply. So, all said and done, a 19 worker loss for Gummyho. It's probably okay. He's 19 workers down in total right now. If I can do my math correctly, I'm not. 14 workers down right now. Uh, so he's like 14 workers down at the moment. Hmm. Well, that's okay. With Triple Orbital up on the map, he should be able to recover from this. And again, he's playing mech as well, so he has a pretty strong army. He actually has an army supply lead. In fact, it might be Dark who's in trouble, who, if Gummy who attacks across the map, might just get a lot of damage done. Because what does Dark actually have out at the moment? He had those few roaches. That was actually a good chunk of his army supply. He's struggling to even things out at the moment. Two roaches and three greens. That is not pretty. More Ling is on the way as well as he starts up an upgrade, starts up his lair, but I actually think that Dark is in a lot of trouble here in the early stages of the game. Let's see what happens. We're going to see two Cyclones will lock onto the Spine Crawl. The Banshee will work its way through there as well. The thing is, there isn't really any anti-air against these Banshees even. I mean, yes, there's two Queens, but Banshees pick through Queens pretty fast, especially if, like, a Cyclone locks onto one of them. That could be an issue. We are going to see Gummy Hill back in the way. I mean, what he's done is nice. He's stopped Dr uh, Dark from droning up and saturating a third base. By just having a presence on the map, by moving across here, he's saying, you know, you better make some units, otherwise you're going to die. And Doc's like, oh yeah, you're right. Actually, that's a good point, Gamiho. Thanks for uh, pointing that out to me. So Doc made some units, but then what's happened is Gamiho is like, haha, I tricked you. Now I'm not actually going to attack. And your units are wasted and you've got no drones. And Doc's like, oh crap, Gamiho, you got me this time. So it's one of those situations where the Terran is doing, you know, making the right moves to make things happen correctly here. You know, just get himself into a better position as time passes by. You're going to see uh, Hellback just going to morph into a Hellion, and we're going to see Hellions and Cyclones joining up together still. Let's see if he just continue to repair up here. I love the introduction of the Banshee in the sky. It's actually going to be a Hellion-Cyclone composition continuity out of Gummyho. Very mobile-based mech army, but I love the introduction of the Banshees. The Banshees are com some kind of real extra damage, which I actually think is a real necessity here in this to kind of help, as the game goes by, help against this army, which you're actually very good at kiting against. But sometimes if you just need that extra bit of damage, even defensively, it can really kind of become a kind of a big fat feature. So let's continue to see how Gummy Ho plays this out. Three Banshees will head towards the natural spore, well positioned, will push these away almost immediately to begin with. A scan will clean out a creep tumor or two, perhaps. There's two. Does he get a third? <gasps> He's actually gonna dive quite far in, and the cyclones they do lock on, although mostly on Zerglins to begin with. Actually, these Hellions are uh, maybe going a little bit too far into Creepy, however. There's the power of the Banshees. As soon as he sees an opportunity, he's moving forwards with these. 
grabs a couple of shots onto Ravagers. I mean, the Queen defense is good, Transfuse is good, so he doesn't actually lose anything, but it is Gummy who are looking for opportunities, looking at ways he can pick away against this army. This plus two vehicle plate is finished. Them upgrades are insane for him. Plus two vehicle plate against, well, I guess 1 1. It's a fairly even scenario. You'll see here the hive is on the way up from dark. And you imagine that one of the main things he'll look to gain with this hive tech is probably going to be that, um, is probably going to be the, um, the vipers. You know, with the vipers out, what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to, um, really sort of lock this army down, blinding cloud it, push it away. You're going to be able to abduct as well, grab a few units forwards. You're going to have to be careful with those Vipers though, because if you do pull Vipers into this, then Cyclones do lock onto them pretty quickly if they get too far ahead of the army, so got to watch out for that. And as we'll be seeing the a couple of extra factories coming up in the main base here, the Viper is building on the main. So there's the first Viper being introduced. Banshees are still around. I'm going to be uh, picking off a Queen here. I mean, this is a nice little kind of harassment squad, right? It's actually going to target down the Hydra Den. I wonder if that goes down before the upgrade finishes. This barracks taking some damage. It's not going to go down before the upgrade finishes if he comes across and kills Queens, although that's probably the better way to do things. Um, he's going to get a couple drones as well. So Banshee's doing some work in the main base of Dark. And we've seen a few more drones added on here. The Hydrisks continue to come up as well, and a couple more Vipers. Aliens and Cyclones from Gummy Hill still just joining together. Still just getting set up and ready to go. Still just moving around the map as well. I mean, again, it's a highly mobile composition that's reliant on locking on, kiting away, and continuing to pick away at the Zerg army. I feel as though this army from Gummy Hill works better in smaller numbers than the army of Doctors. Let me see a few crossbow bars to help push this back as the Banshees are starting to go down, but man, actually, look how little there's left over for Dark in the front here. Hell, he's getting towards the front to keep on damage, and the Cyclones are still locked on, and everything's starting to go down. All of a sudden, Gummy Hill finds himself just doing so much damage here, locking on again, continuing to pick away at Queen after Queen, and more and more Queens just keep going down here. Viper gonna abduct forwards just ever so slightly. And we are just gonna be seeing these uh, Cyclones continuing to... Uh, well, continuing to get damage done, I guess. We're going to see them now pulling away to the bottom right-hand side. Roaches and Hydras out of Dark. Just going to be sitting up on the fourth base. And to the right-hand side, Dark also has a fifth base on the way down as well. VSCV is going to start repairing up this Cyclone or two. So we're going to start repairing those up. And a couple more Vipers coming into play as well. The, um... The, uh... Con what's it called? Consume... Uh, I can't even remember what it's called. It's like, uh... It is called Consume. God. That's, uh, it's been a while since I've talked about Vipers. It's actually been, strangely enough, a very long time since I've last seen Vipers in play. Um, forgot what it was called there. All the Viper abilities kind of come into me at once and not the one I wanted to talk about. Anyways, the problem for Dark is really that he's just on a Roche-based composition. These Roaches aren't really doing anything. They're getting locked onto, well, they're doing one thing, and that is dying. And they're dying quite frequently. They're dying pretty regularly here. As we're going to be seeing the Banshees to the right-hand side, just going to be working away at this uh, hatchery. Just picking away at that slowly but surely. You're gonna see these uh, Hellion Salbats and a few Cyclones. I'm gonna be just gonna be uh, moving up here. And I'm just gonna see a, a couple of Cyclones just being abducted in. And they are just gonna go down. So, some good damage being done right now as uh, Gummiho picks off a fifth base and just stops Dark from continuing to expand in this game. Keeping the supplies fairly low. Gummiho's bank is huge actually. Gummiho spent that, he'd have a huge army supply advantage. I mean, his army's trading well enough already. Imagine what he could be doing with an extra. <laughs> 1,000, 2,000 investment. A couple of medivacs on the way up. You might think that's a bit of a weird choice when playing mech, but the medivacs will allow him to either do one or two things, uh, two different things mainly. They're both going to be involved in Hellbat, so you're either going to be Hellbat dropping into the mineral lines. In fact, they both involve Hellbat drops. Either Hellbat drop into the mineral lines, or also just Hellbat drops on top of the army just to get the Hellbats in range a little bit faster and start really getting some damage done. So. It's an interesting one. I don't feel as though help that I'm dropping onto this army is going to be super effective, unless I guess he could go over the Hydras. It's an interesting one. We'll see how he uses these Medivacs. He's going to make more than two, so he's quite invested into the idea of it. As we're going to see right now, the uh, Vipers just abducting forwards. Actually, a lot of the Cyclones getting taken down here. Nice blinding cloud as well. Really good spell usage on those Vipers. And for the first time in a long time, we're going to be seeing Dark actually winning an engagement. A couple of Banshees still harassing around. I love this out of... Um, the fact that he's just continually around with these Banshees, and he's still making more every now and then as well, just to keep on being a nuisance, just to keep on finding ways to just do a bit more damage, and, you know, it's forcing Dark to pull back for a couple of moments, and then all of a sudden, boom, Gummyho's in the center of the map again. And he's uh, Medivacs right now, we're not really seeing them be used for anything. I wonder if he just wants healing on the Hellbats? I mean, I guess that's one of the obvious choices for it, but I didn't really think about it. Now we see uh, Siege Tank's going to start sieging up. 
Oh, and that's just wanted for the mobility of the tanker vacs. I mean, as this game continues, he's realizing that maybe going into more standard mech composition is where he wants to be. He's kept his opponent busy with the Hellion Cyclone initially, and now, because he's already got the upgrades, it's a very easy, and the setup and the infrastructure, it's a very switch, easy switch over into siege tanks now. So, I'm just going to be sort of switching up into that. And we've seen the um, Hellbats Cyclones. Just going to be uh, looking to see what they can do. Looking onto that hatchery again, and... Well, Rudin's going to be moving forwards. Actually, look at this. The tanks just get abducted in, though. Oh, nice little pickups there. Picking up a couple of the tanks and getting them out of there. Nice abduct once more, and it does kill off the medevacs here. More tanks teaching up in the back, though. Now it's actually the Zerg player running through the blinding cloud into the Terran army. Gimiho is kiting around. He's still got Hellbats in this. A Cyclone left over as well. And what's he rebuilding? More Hellions and more Siege Tanks, too. So, lots more units on the way out. He does pick off this fourth base, which you have to imagine was one of his major goals throughout time here. As we're going to be seeing, does he save that siege tank? He does just pick it up in time. Man, these tanks are dealing out damage. Eight work, uh, eight kills on this tank already. There's uh, a couple of tanks in the back just putting out on the hurt as well. As we'll be seeing now. Now, uh, Zerg army from Dark going to loop around the right hand side. What's going on over here? A couple of medevacs going to move over into location perhaps to see what they can get up to. It's going to be uh, dropping over to this side maybe. And see the few cyclones from Gummy just moving around as well. They're going to go up the left hand side, in fact to try and see what's uh, going to be going on. So they're going to keep on moving around. The tank's on the high ground now. Going to be uh, one of them going down. I mean, it was low health. It only took one shot, but still just harassing, keeping Dark on the back foot. As we're going to be seeing more units from Gummy Hood just moving forwards into the center of the map and just looking to see what else he's uh, going to be able to get up to. So moving into the center here, I'm just going to be seeing one tank being sieged up and another tank too. <laughs> Slowly but surely, I mean, it's the way of mech, right? Just to slowly siege these tanks and set up positions which you can push forward from. Lovely spread as well, which is necessary at this point in the game, because if a blinding cloud comes down at this point, well, boom, all of a sudden, if there's a blinding cloud, and it's on top of a whole bunch of tanks, then they're all taken out of action. So, ideal, of course, to be able to um, spread them out. And we'll see how Gumihua continues to advance forwards, when he only has so many medevacs to work with. Hellion's currently being chased away down the right hand side. Those Roaches doing a pretty good job of that there. These tanks are actually going to drop very far forwards. We're going to be seeing the Hellions being used to tank Cyclones moving forwards as well. Gummyho's going to have to continue fighting this army. Blind Clouds come down, and that's when the Medivacs come into play. They start pulling back. Boost still active on them, so even when they get abducted in, they're able to pull back fairly easily. However, where is he going to? Where's that tank line gone? It's actually just disappeared for the most part. Gummyho's been unseized, and that's going to hurt him. As he will continue to push forward, it's very hard to see. I think it's going to be the Zerg player, Dark, who cleans this up, in fact. Look at that, he is going to push this down. Gummyho is still have money in the bank that he needs to spend. But Dark is cleaned up again, and what a great back and forth game number one we're having here. In that first series of the day, Cyclones going to lock on once again here. Going to see a few corrosive bars up in the sky. However, the tank evac is going to evacuate the position and does pull back safely. What's going on around the bases? I mean, we see four or five bases up for Gummyho. The thing is, we've been so focused on the Zerg side of the map, and that's just the way that Gummyho has been playing. His composition early in the game of Hellion Cycle has been very focused on being active, being pressure, you know, pressuring continuously throughout the game, and that means that we haven't really seen Dark have many chances of his own to get across the map here and to get some damage done into the mineral lines of Gummyho. Now some roaches, ravages, and a few hydras just going to sit over to the right hand side still. As we actually see a double hellbat. Oh, a cy cyclone drop. Whoa, what? Uh, well, that's unique. Well, that base will go down pretty quickly. The drone took a pretty long uh, route to get there because these rocks aren't down to the left hand side. That's something which Dark will probably want to focus on at some point in the fairly near future. Get that cleaned out. The cyclone's now going to back away, lift up once again, maybe go from a different angle to get some further damage done. See Chang there just gonna fire, he takes down the Zergling. We're gonna be seeing Lings, Roaches, Hydras, Ravagers. All moving down the left side here. Five Vipers up in the sky. And they're gonna be moving forward to see what's happening. I mean they run into this planetary fortress. Awkward thing is, I mean, it looks like Gummy was just gonna give this up because he's not really immediately in position to kind of deal with this. So now we see Hellbat drops are gone starting to come into play, and these drones still stacked. It's gonna be starting to take some more damages. Vikings coming forward to fight the Vipers, and they are starting to get some kills. Vipers are beginning to fall, but so are the Vikings too. It's a pretty hectic trade over here. As oh my god, these drones are not having a good time. Cyclone's gonna come up here as well as they lock on. This hatchery goes down very quickly indeed. So it's a nice little pickup. I love that spiraling around the top side here. This hell about to clean up a lot of drones. A lot of workers went down as well. They're losing that left hand side base of Gummy Hill. It's obviously not something which is just like, oh yeah, that's fine. 
because actually it's one of his only mining bases that remain. At this point in the game, his main base has what? 95 and... I can't click. 200 minerals left in it. His natural has 200 minerals left in it as well. His third base can't have much more than that, about 1,000 or so. So that left-hand side of base was super important for Gumiho, and now he's lost that? That's going to be difficult to set up once again, because the fact it was already a planetary fortress should have helped him out a lot. Now if he wants to retake it, he has to move a command center in location, then morph it into a planetary, and that's a huge timing window in which Dark can punish that base, while Gumiho might once again be out of position, or just before it's set up into that planetary fortress again. He's going to be collecting towards the centre. I mean, a couple more Vipers coming in once more. I'm actually going to see a few fours added in from Gumiho. I really, I'm intrigued by the way his composition has changed here over the past few minutes because he went from, he went into that kind of tank base play, but then he hasn't really rebuilt tanks since then. I wonder if that's going to hurt him now because he doesn't really have any tanks at all now. Nice planning clouds and this mech army is struggling to find locations it can actually fight from. Let's see if he's trying to repair this base. It's not going to happen in dark. Just seems to have a little bit too much here. These fours are going to go down. I mean, there's not really any medivacs in the sky to kind of micro them around or anything either, and Gumiho will just type out GG. Dark takes game number one. A very Our players. We have to the other left-hand side of the map, our blue Zerg. It's going to be Dark from SKT1. And to the bottom right-hand side, our red Terran player will be Gumiho from MVP. I can't... Oh, there we go. All right, so let's uh, see how game number two is going to get rolling in just a few moments. Frozen Temple is another map you can use to play very, you can you can play very sort of defensive games on it. I feel as though compared to King Sejong, taking the fourth base will be harder to hold if you're trying to play a mech, which is something that Gumiho obviously did in game number one. So that's, um, well, that's, that's, it'll be interesting. Let's see how it plays out. Let's see what happens as we get set up into this. Thank you very much, Papa Mitch, who resubs for 15 months in a row. Crazy numbers there. Thank you very much for the 15 months, and he says, love the new rebrand. Thank you very much, do appreciate it. Can we get some Esoteric Hearts into the chat, please? Guys, I need an executive decision from Twitch chat. What do we do? Do we have se 2 i Hearts? Or do we change the name to Wardy Hearts with a capital W? Why does it have to be a capital W? It really bothers me. How come my sc 2 i can be lowercase, but Wardy has to have a capital W? It really triggers me. Let me know, guys, what you think. Let me know what you think. New Twitch emotes are something which, um... Something which will be, um... So, what am I saying? New Twitch emotes are something which I'll have to, um... Really sort of, uh, <laughs> Get, uh, focus on, I think. I'm gonna get a lot of the Twitch emotes revamped. Probably. Just get them to look nicer. And that's one of the next things on the list of, on the long, long, long list of things to do. You'll see a couple of Zerg and some Dark going to come around the right hand side here. We'll be moving down this right hand side of the map to, well, once again, similar to the last game, he went pool first or went gas pool after the Overlord. And he'll just be looking to see if he can pick off the SCV build in the command center, if he can get a worker kill. On uh, Frozen Temple, the things do end up kind of cross the map a little bit more quickly, although he's waiting there. With those two lings, Ruby just waiting as well, saying, you know what, you went pool first last time around. Not going to take the risk of you cancelling my CC. I'm going to wait long enough to make sure that by the time I leave, and by the time you come in, my CC will be finished at least, so that can't be slowed down in any way, shape, or form. Let's be seeing the uh, CC. We'll finish up in a moment or two then. Well, let's talk a little bit about the build we're actually seeing. We're not going to see that 2 on one setup, which is so common nowadays in the matchup. We're going to be seeing a single Hellion popping out, and again, a Hellion-based opening out of Gummyho. Maybe once more suggestive that he wants to play some sort of mech style in these early stages. The Lings, they do poke the front, and they manage to get away because Ling Speed finishes up just a bang on time for them to back away there. So, a couple of Lings do back away up the right. I'm just going to be seeing a couple of SCVs coming in towards the natural expansion. Supply Depot will uh, come down here as well. So Supply Depot gets placed as part of the wall, and well, Cloak starts up from the uh, Star Pub. He's actually going to build a medevac, so... Whether the cloak's just a fake, whether the medevac's a mistake, that's what we'll find out in just a few moments' time. I'm just going to see that medevac on the way here as the Hellion is just going to be... Well, the Hellions are just going to be forcing away anything that might come down the right. We see the Reaper going to scout up this direction. 
Just have a look to see what's going on. Check the third base timing, for example. Figure out is there going to be an aggressive attack here. I mean, Dog went aggressive in the last game, made that initial set of Zerglings, then followed up with a Ling Ravager attack, which didn't really work out too well for him. I mean, he did okay-ish damage, but I think overall, Gummyho came out of it with infrastructure set up. He came out, with, came out of it with upgrades on the way. And stuff like that. Wardy Hearts. The only problem I have with the Wardy prefix is that, again, it has to have a capital W, which I don't know how I feel about. Anyways, we're going to see three Hellions running by while two Widowmines are going to hit the natural. It's a very interesting setup here. Ooh, Dark going to deny with the block on the ramp. Oh, 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 drone's blown away. Whatever he thought that was, he responded well to it. Medivac now in the main base is going to be the Widowmine, and really just see a uh, spot call being placed. One drone goes down. Another drone! Oh, sorry, I was just going to say another Widowmine. I didn't realize it wasn't borrowed yet. I was like, oh my god, the drones are stacked next to a Widowmine. I thought everything was about to go down, but not the case in the end. Widowmine will now burrow in the third base. I'm just going to be seeing a connection onto a, um, a lava or so. Another smoke wall going to build up here. And creep just starting, or continuing to push out over to the right-hand side. You can see the Banshees coming across now, so the Cloak was a commitment. So you can follow up with Cloak Banshees and have that Cloak available almost immediately. We we'll start working this way on a few Roaches at the front here, and the Hellion's going to drop off into the main base. So Hellion's going to try and run by, but, well, it looks as though Dark is very much so prepared for that. The Hellion's going to drop back to the low ground now. Do you have an armory yet in the game? We do not, so there's no way for them to become Hellbats or anything. Banshee will turn away as well. Queen's coming forwards, and the Overseer is just about to finish Morphine, so a smart decision to back off with the Banshee. A few Hellions going to load up into that Medivac once more here. As we'll see once again, this uh, group of units just going to be continuing back away down to the bottom right side. Just continuing to pull away down here. Then the third command center from Gumiho is currently uh, continuing to build. So it's continuing to build and we'll be finishing up shortly. Again, just a couple of Banshees overhead, a few Hellions nearby. There's two engineering bays from Gumiho just sat waiting for... Um, Waiting for kind of something to, uh, well, waiting for upgrades to stop, really. And you see Team Marines moving forwards. The stim pack is about five seconds away from completion. And it's going to be seeing the, uh, couple of Marines just going to be, uh, working their way through this overload. So, overload starting to take a little bit of damage. Stim coming down, and you can just see that overload does get taken down here pretty swiftly. Things continue to move around, and again, looking to see what's up and what's happening. As this overload here from Dark just going to pull away off over to the left hand side. So Overlord does get taken down as well here, and the two Marines get lifted up once more. Yep, brought over to the right. So again, just units moving around at this point. You'll see those couple of Banshees still up in the sky. The tank is here as well. And uh, yeah, just, I mean, Gamino just cleaning up, doing a little bit of uh, bits and pieces, bits and bobs. Both players just sort of in the initial setting up phase of the game still, I would say, at this point in time. You'll see those Zerglings and Roaches making their way through these rocks. And if those rocks go down, just going to be seeing Dark with the potential to... Just open up the map, and especially if you're going to be playing against potentially Mech, which he isn't playing against. I think he knows that too. I think he's scared. Yeah, he's scared the stim. But even against Bio, to some degree, even if it's whether, you know, whether it's tank or wood mine based composition, these rocks are always a nuisance. And opening these means that if the Terran player pushes to the fourth base, instead of only having one avenue of attack, you all of a sudden have a second avenue to very quickly loop around and create a surround for yourself. And that is obviously something you're always looking to do as a Zerg player playing against a bio force or any kind of army really, generally the better surround you get, the better it's going to be for you when you have so many units, you have this real sort of swarmy number of units. As we see the um, two Banshees coming in here, just going to be continuing to work their way through the um, hatchery or so, perhaps. Another tank getting lifted and another tank here will be lifted as well in just a few moments. And we've seen these Marines from Gummiho going to pull out over to the right hand side. However, there's a bunch of Banes starting to come in right now. So a bunch of Banes coming in. We see six of them starting to finish up here. And um, yeah, three Siege Tanks, three Tanker Vax moving towards the top side. Banshee's coming in. And actually going to continue to shoot down. Drone after drone after drone. You see this Queen going to be going down now as well. And then we've seen, well, very quickly, this army of our uh, Terran player is uh, being kind of greeted and turned away. It looks as though we had some infested Terran, uh, some infested fungal groves coming down there to actually catch one of those medivacs as the Banes roll into the fair. Don't get much damage done. Wow, well, we seem to just be like a couple seconds behind everything happening on the map at the moment. Apologies, guys. As we just, uh, let's just tidy things up. Continuing on here in this second game of this TVZ, Dark and Gummy Hill. They played such a great game number one for us, and for now, game number two is looking very, um, 
Very exciting still, as we have more Banes going to be finishing in. We're just going to be seeing Ling Bane and Ravager, a few Infestors, joining themselves together. There's a few more Bane and morphing in once again from Dark. So continue to set this up. We can see he's holding this to the left hand side, cleaned up a few of these Crypt Tumors as well. So a few Crypt Tumors getting cleaned out. See the Zerglings coming down here to the left hand side. Again, looking to see what they might be able to do, what they might be able to get up to. I'm gonna pull away down to the south side once more. Now, all of this has been leading into transition from Dark into the Hive Tech, and we see now the uh, Ultra's Cavern is down and finished, and we see Ultra's already on the way. Kindness Plate and builds out the Ultra Cavern. And again, for Dark, he's actually in a very good situation to go late game with. His creep spread is fantastic, protecting his right hand side bases very, very easily very far in advance, and that makes it difficult for the Terran to push up this direction and to really start getting damage done. He starts to take a base to the left hand side, so in case the Terran does kill this right hand side base off, it's very difficult for the Terran to simultaneously hit a base on the other side of the map, so he has somewhere to fall back to and fall back on should he lose a base, although that of course is not ideal. Ideally he just wouldn't lose it at all. As we'll see, two medivacs with tanks inside, just slowly moving forwards. Another scan coming in, we'll see a few marines going to stem forwards as well. I'm just going to be seeing a couple of uh, troop teamers again taken down. It's difficult though, Gumiho can't really fight here. He needs anti ultralisk army, and at this point he's sort of missed his timing to just attack against one or two ultras before Kitan is playing. So now he has to sit back, build up labor rays, and I was going to say the next thing he's going to have to go into as well is going to be Ghosts, because already Aspire about halfway done from the dark. That's him preparing to deal with the Liberator count at this point. Now Dog himself says, well, I've now hit my very strong late game setup. I want to maybe attack on into you. Let's see what I can do before I even need Corruptors here. He starts to run on in. These Ultras moving forward too. Nice Fungal Groves. Going to make it very difficult for a lot of these units to retreat from the Ultras. And actually, the Corrosive Vows were very well placed as well. Getting rid of all the Liberators in the sky. Look how many Ultras remain. Three, four Ultras still up here. The Ravagers too. High Ground Vision will now allow the Corrosive Bowers and the Ravages in general to get rid of those tanks on the high ground, and that will be GG. Dark goes 2-0.